Hey, what's up, everybody? It is Friday, September 13th. Friday the 13th. Whoa. So here we are on the precipice of the long-awaited rate cut by the Fed. The monetarists have been praying and begging and hoping for so long that they're going to get a rate cut, the panacea for everything, the rate cut solves everything, all problems eliminated on the rate cut. So they're finally going to get their wish next week. The only question is how big does the Fed cut right now? Actually, we had a big jump up in the probability for a 50 basis point rate cut. That jumped up like 18 percentage points in one day. But it still looks right now, at least uh, from probabilities that are priced into Fed fund futures uh, as a 25 basis point rate cut. But this is it. This is what I've been talking about. You know, as soon as they cut rates, we're, we're in a different environment. And, you know, I've been trying to explain this just like throughout the whole period of the rate increases when they were super bearish or out of the market or outright short the market because everybody, all these people were predicting a, a crash and a deep recession, uh, which never happened the whole entire time. I was explaining via these videos and in my reports that the rate increases were going to add. It's a, basically a, a fiscal expansion. It was going to add these interest income transfers, which is exactly what has happened. The funny thing is now is that we're seeing, I'm seeing all this commentary online and articles about, oh my God, it's we're now at 1.2 trillion in interest income transfers. It's blowing a hole in the federal budget. Of course, the media portrays this all the time as a negative, as nothing new. There's no discussion at all that this 1.2 trillion is a transfer to the non-government, to the economy. And like I've been saying, that's, that is the reason why the economy has stayed in a positive growth mode now over the entire time. And it's not growing that fast. I mean, two, two and a half percent is not exactly fast growth with 1.2 trillion in interest income transfers. But the media puts it out there as some, you know, terrible, negative, impactful thing on the government's finances. Look, the government... The federal government spends whatever it wants in its own currency. I mean, it's really up to Congress that sets the, the budget. We haven't even had a budget, uh, an official budget set in a long time. We're going from continuing resolution to continuing resolution, which, by the way, Congress has to come up with another one of those by the end of this month. That's something that's not even really being discussed. But anyway, next week, so Wednesday, they're going to get their hoped for and prayed for rate cut, and we'll see what happens. I keep telling you guys that this is the start of a change, a, a shift in the environment. I've been spelling out now, you know, we have the rate cuts, and once the Fed starts cutting, it's not going to cut once and stop. It's going to cut, it's going to cut, it's going to cut, and each successive cut is going to add to that breaking effect was talking about, you know, and they're going to cut some more. It'll set in motion a series of rate cuts, which will lead to the reduction in those interest income transfers. And, you know, we got these other things going on now. We got to get a continuing resolution at the end of this month. Let's even not even worry about that right now. Let's just assume that happens. We got to get through the election and see what the policy proposals, whoever gets elected and what the economic policy proposals are going to be and, you know, what, what the makeup of Congress is going to be, who's in control, what gets passed for next year. Next year, we got a whole bunch of stuff. So we got the rate cuts, which is going to apply that breaking effect on the economy. Next year, January 1st, the debt ceiling has to be increased. Okay. Let's assume that gets done. You got smaller increases for Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, veterans benefits, military pay, all that stuff that I've been talking about. Um, you have the Trump tax cuts we're gonna, th that are set to expire. So you have a lot of things, a bunch of things out there that are going to add fiscal drag unless they are offset by some new fiscal policy that includes you know, higher spending. 
So, I mean, I've been laying this out for you. I know some of you want to see it. They want you want to see a crash like tomorrow or something. I I don't you know advocate for crashes. I try to kind of um, describe what the forward economic environment is going to look like. I mean that's really basically what you ought to be focusing on. And you know just like back in October two thousand twenty two, I said we were at an inflection point, and it's all going to get positive. And last year, when the forecasts were almost universally negative and universally calling for a recession, I said that there wasn't going to be any recession. These interest income transfers are going to be too strong. They're going to keep the economy afloat. That's exactly what happened. I said the stock market was going to make new all-time highs. By the way, speaking of new all-time highs, we've had, you know, this past week, Ending today, we had a nice bounce back in the Dow and the S&P. But if you look at it, it's like three times up here, okay? And, and that's with, you know, all the hype about the, the interest rate cut that's coming next week. That's with actual very strong fiscal flows, all right? So you think about it. I mean, that's a lot of energy, a lot of energy. If you think of these fiscal flows like energy, that's a lot of energy, a lot of wattage, a lot of amperage going in. And, you know, we keep butting up against these highs. This is the third time we're up here or close to being up here. Maybe next week it breaks through on the rate cut and some euphoria that follows that. Uh, I mean, that's possible. Do I think that the rate cut signifies or, or sets off a new bullish leg, bull mark leg in the in the in the market, in the bull market. I don't think so. I you know, like for what I'm telling you, I, the reason I don't think so is for everything that I just spelled out. The fact that, you know, we're facing more fiscal drag. And uh with even with these massive uh interest income transfers, I mean the economy is growing very slow. So what I always say is that the stock market is going to follow the economy. You know, best scenario that I could see is that for a while we stick around here at two, two and a half percent growth. And then, you know, we could we could make marginal new highs by a few percentage points or something in the in the S&P and the Dow. I mean, the Nasdaq is not really there. That's still pretty far below its its high. Uh, but these are just like if you if you step back and, and try to get a bigger picture perspective of where we you know where we were and where we are now, you know that extra little incremental increase if that happens, with everything that we've seen with with the you know the interest income transfers with the very strong leading flows that are uh, currently happening with the uh, um, enthusiasm and expectation about a rate cut, which is finally going to happen. I mean, lots of positives being thrown, actual positives and, you know, psychological positives. And here we are, you know, butting up against those highs and, and having a hard time getting through. And again, maybe it's going to go through partially for a little while, but, you know, I'm... <laughs> I'm kind of like stepping aside. I'm in the market. I have cash available uh, for 2025. I'm not even saying for like cash available for next month or the month. I mean, for next year, that if we have a significant pullback, um, you know, that's going to be an amazing time. I always talk about, hey, how do you build wealth? Accumulate assets over time. And patience is the key. Patience is absolutely the key and discipline. And you wait. You wait for periods of time. And they're, they're not fleeting periods of time. It's not like it happens in a day and, oh, I missed that because it was down today. Or I missed that because it was down, you know, last week. You're given a big window. I mean, in 2022, when they started raising rates, you had a very big window because they started in March and really in October. Uh, so you had like a seven month window where the accumulation uh, potential was amazing. 
And all during that time, I was like, I was buying, I was buying, I was adding to my portfolio. I was buying stocks that I, you know, that I have, or I've had, I've been adding to that and adding new ones. So it's not like a moment like, oh, I missed it because it happened today, or I missed it because it happened this week and I, I wasn't in. On that note, I'm going to mention something about gold. Look, we had another week of new highs. And again, let me just let me just say something here. This gold rally is all based on the belief that uh, the, the rate cut is going to be bullish for gold, which I would counter by saying we went through a year and a half of very significant rate increases and gold had an amazing run of price gains, okay? Amazing, which wasn't supposed to happen according to the people who are now all bullish on the rate cuts. The same dynamic is gonna apply in gold as I'm saying uh, that's gonna apply in stocks, that the loss of interest income to the economy is basically not gonna be, is not gonna be, not basically, it's not gonna be bullish for gold. People think that's the case now. By the way, again, just checking uh, the CFTC's commitment of traders report that came out this afternoon, producers, gold producers were again, net sellers of futures in the week ending on Tuesday, September 10th. They now hold almost a 70,000, I think it's 69.6 thousand net short position. That is their biggest net short position in gold since the week ending March 8th, 2022. And by the way, that preceded that short position back there in March, 2022 by the gold producers, that preceded a 20% decline in the price of gold. Okay, gold went from like 2000 to 1600, um, you know, when they, they had that very large short position. So 20% right here, would be what, we're at 2,500, 2,600, be like a 500 point down move, all right? And um, I do think that is coming, by the way. Everyone who's buying gold right now, this is purely speculators. You gotta think, I always say to you guys, don't go against these, these uh, producers in physical commodities. I mean, it's, it would be, it's very arrogant of anyone who's not in that business to think they know better, not only arrogant, but silly, foolish. It's very foolish. Let me use that term instead. It's very foolish for anyone who is not in that business as a gold producer, for example, to think they know better than the producers. Based on what? You don't have an understanding of the actual supply demand fundamentals, and you will never have it, uh, uh, you know, at the level that a physical commodity producer has it. So yeah, it looks like it's gonna keep on going up. And I know all the speculators are really excited and, and the gold bugs are excited and you see a lot of articles, you even see it coming out of the main Wall Street banks, you know, buy gold, it's the best hedge, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's another thing we're going to come back and talk about eventually. The other final thing I want to mention is that I'm seeing a lot of stuff out there uh, about the, the Kamala Harris trade, like get that trade on now. And I just think this is so ridiculous because first of all, she hasn't been elected yet, but let's even assume she gets elected based on where she is in the polls right now, which every poll that I've seen she's leading Trump by a few percentage points. Uh, not necessarily in the Electoral College, there's, but there's a lot uh, of undecideds, swing states still in the Electoral College. That's kind of even, and it depends what happens with the swing states. But the important thing is she hasn't been elected yet. Even assuming she is elected, we don't know um, for certain what her economic plan is, number one. Number two, we don't know how Congress is going to end up, who's going to be in, in control, whether it's the Democrats or the Republicans. And number three, we don't know what's going to get passed in terms of an economic uh, program or programs. 
It's ridiculous now to make a bet on that. That That's just pure speculation. That's like a bet, I don't know, in a casino where you don't know the odds at all. And you're just like, you're just hoping. You're just throwing something out there and hoping that it works. And But that's being put out there as like a serious, you know, uh, um, thoughtful investment strategy right now. It's not. I mean, there's plenty of time. We wait. Let's get through the election. Let's see how, uh, you know, what happens with the with, with Congress, with the new Congress. Let's see what proposals are put out there. Let's see what is passed. Then we'll know. I mean, the things we do know right now, I told them to you. We know that Congress has to um, have a continuing resolution passed by the end of this month. We know that the Fed rate increases as they get rolled out. I mean, sorry, the Fed rate cuts as they get rolled out, they're gonna slowly drain out some of that interest income transfer that's been so critical in supporting the economy. We know that in 2025, we're gonna have more fiscal drag. I mean, these are things we know. These are things you can bet on right now. But a Harris you know, plan, a Harris uh, uh, portfolio, when you don't even know if she won yet, and even if you assume she's going to win, you don't really even know what her plan is specifically or what parts will be passed. I mean, it's just crazy. But that's being put out there as solid investment advice. And I would strongly advise that you don't listen to it. Anyway, it's Friday, folks. That's it for, for me. I forgot to mention, please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. I appreciate it. Uh, if you've already done that, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And don't forget, go to my website, pitbulleconomics.com. Sign up for a 30-day free trial to MMT Trader. I try to give you the big picture. I try to lay out the landscape, the economic landscape, like a year ahead, sometimes longer, sometimes two years. So you can really strategize. You can prepare. There's time to prepare. Like I said before, it doesn't just happen in an instant, Okay. It happens over a period of time. And it, you know, it's, I know it's very hard for people, maybe some of you to stay disciplined and stay patient. You want it now, you want it now. I need money now, I need to profit now, I need to get rich now. That's not the way it's gonna happen. It happens, it's a progression slowly over time. And it's really kind of easy if you just uh, embrace that understanding and function and operate in a way that incorporates the elements of patience, the elements of discipline, all right? The elements of buy low, all that stuff. It sounds very simplistic. I know some of you want fancy things like, like um, AI driven, you know, I've seen, <laughs> I've seen some stuff on these AI driven models and they're not working out very well for people who think that, you know, another panacea, like that's the, the be all end all. What works out well is like a guy like Ken Griffin, I finally remember this guy's name once from Citadel, who puts his computers at the New York Stock Exchange and the CME's data center in Illinois and basically legally front runs orders. It works, you know, if you have that kind of connection if you could set up uh, an operation like that, more power to you. But, you know, he's one of a, a handful of, of guys or operators uh, that have that system set up. That's not knowledge in the sense of understanding the economic outlook and, and making uh, wise bets and, and having, you know, that perspective and everything that I've been talking about. That's just like you know, I don't know what to call it. I mean, I, I happen to think it's cheating, but I don't care, you know, let him do it. I I, I like the way I approach investing. Um, and so, yeah, anyway, that's it for today, today, folks. Enjoy the weekend. See you on Monday. Bye.